going on Pokemon Go trainers. Welcome to episode 301 of the Lured Up podcast, where we take Pokemon Go way more seriously than we do ourselves. Lured Up is part of the Pokemon Professor Network, and today is Tuesday, March 12th, 2024. This episode is streaming live on twitch.tv slash Pokemon Professor Network. We're also throwing it up live on Twitter and YouTube. On trying Twitter? that out. Yeah, just give it a little shot. See if we get any uh X. any any listening happening over there. I think a lot of people that are on Twitter that I interact with on the on the reg- regular don't necessarily make it over to the podcast. So this might be a good opportunity for them to check it out. So looking Is it forward only to the audio that. that goes through No nah, man, Twitter? we're str- no nah, bro. The it's video. the video? Yeah. Oh no, they can see my ugly mug. There you Uh-oh. go. There you go. I'm Ken Pescatore. The ugly mug is Adam Tuttle. Actually he's beautiful. Hey Come trainers. On. What's going on? <laughs> How are you, man? What's Not happening? Too much. Uh just did a tryout tonight for my son. Uh to see if he could go with a different team uh it looks promising that's all i'll say he looked pretty nice out there dude i always Very wanted to play hockey as a kid man that's got to be so cool listen I, I i'm 35 years old and i laced up skates last year and it's been a lot of fun learning how to play the game you got to play in from... a pickup game man so you can get some body well, checks uh, yeah that's uh what i'm afraid of <laughs> I don't. I don't have a. I don't have a great uh, dental plan to uh, take care of all my teeth if they go missing. You know, bro. I know. And I don't have the PTO, the especially with GoFest coming up. If I break a leg or something, I don't want to. You know, I can't do that. <laughs> I got to do. I got to do the soft stuff. Well, what's going on to everyone that's here in the chat? The early birds. I'm approving. Catfisher J. Landor Alpha in the house. What's going they on? They get y'all? the shiny Caterpie and Weedles. Yes, they get all the because shinies of, the worms, of right? all the Pokemons that are available. But we got plenty to talk about this week. We'll recap gameplay as per usual. We have uh, the Pokemon Horizons event just wrapped up. We have the return of Nature's Madness Tapu Koko or Tapu Koko Return of Tapu Koko with that move. Uh, Mega Sceptile also in raids this week. Uh, Weather Week is up next. We can kind of recap the event, prep for the event. Uh, Verdant Wonders. I hope the weather is going to be nice. Yep, Verdant Wonders. uh, Wonders details have been released. Zerud may be the next uh, Galarian Mr. Mime. Seven ninety nine ticket. Ah, it's so it's so Zerud. It's so Zerud. Throw it into a. It's another ticket, you know, just another ticket. It, look, this is a uh, this so is an, rude, a man. blog that's kind of confusing because uh, I love those. Yeah, those are the Com- best ones. Communication right? is well, on point. We'll love t- it. <laughs> oh boy, Adam's hot already. We're uh, no the GoFest type train is full speed ahead. We'll take a look at the details. Uh, really get uh, excited over costume Pikachu and Eevee. Are you excited? I love that they are doing a tie-in for Sun and Moon, and it's rotating through the habitats. Whoa! Not- you, are you wait? Are you saying you're in, you're looking forward to these costume Pokemon? What's going on here? Because because they're not overloading you with hey, catch this yellow crown. Hey, catch this blue crown. It was a hey, lot. Catch this green crown. It was a lot. Hey, catch this pink crown. Like I don't need that many different color crowns. I don't even know why I have them. So two There's is so fine. Many. Two is the cutoff. <laughs> two is Sun fine. crown, moon crown. I'm okay with that. Yeah, and then. It's like Pikachu when they're like, oh, hey, it has every single hat from every single Ash season. Like, I don't need that many hats. Just give me the Kanto one. Give me the Fragment good. hat. No, we'll uh, we'll talk about all that stuff. Uh, Japan Go Fest sold out. What? We'll talk about it. Uh, Wayfair community doesn't typically unanimously agree on anything. Uh, you know how, like, a lot of people butt heads on Twitter? Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, Wayfair I forums. I think just Twitter in general. Yeah, right, but the Wayfair forums have a different type of disagreement. Like, you have where Twitter might be like this, uh, you know, very knee-jerk, you know, hot temper, hot fire kind of reactionary madness that goes on. The The Wayfair forums are a very unique place where everyone has all the receipts they need to prove their points. And, you know, it. there was an interesting post in there from Niantic. We'll talk about it today because I don't know how much weight or how much actual, like, uh, lasting power or impact this post will have on things, but... Uh, it's an interesting one, and it has the Wayfarer community together, uh, which is not common 
And uh, they all unanimously hate this. So we'll talk about it. Oh, gosh. <laughs> That's good news. That's great news. And uh, we also received an interesting email this week from a Brazilian spoofer. And I want to talk about Ooh. it because, look, I disagree with anything and everything regarding spoofing That's that goes without say. Breaks the but TOS, what if I have all no that stuff. Get out. Near me. Start wayfinding. But it's definitely interesting to hear this take. I'm nominating the tree out front eight, of my house. Eight years into the game, the spoof culture has continued to move with the game. We don't hear about it as much as uh, as we used to. Playing GoFest in New York last year opened a lot of eyes for people. Uh, seeing full lobbies for the first time, seeing showcases with 200 people, and just you got the vibe that, yeah, the, the people that you're interacting with uh may not be in proximity so we're going to take a look it was a novel of an email so shout out to 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 the person that wrote in we'll get into it but uh we'll talk about a couple of interesting points no no it, it, it's look we can disagree with something but it would be i'd be remiss if i didn't say hey this is an interesting perspective i don't agree with it but that doesn't mean i can't find it interesting so we'll talk about all that good stuff and uh and dig in but Let's start with your week. How was your week? Did you uh, did you play? Did you do Horizons? Did you watch the Horizons anime? I I watched the first. I think we're into three or four episodes. Dude, it's so good. Yeah, it, it is so really good. good. It might be my favorite season of the anime in many, 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 many seasons. Like, yeah, it's really good. Ashton's been asking like every morning. Hey, can we watch this? It's like make sure you're all set. And then okay, get but that that extra late, twenty. You need I'm, an extra twenty three minutes. Yeah, and it's like if if you don't get yourself situated and you're not dressed and all that stuff, no. But what about the event, the in game event for Horizons? How has it been treating would, you? Have I you been say, hatching? Are you on the single incubator grind? I know you you were you were it pretty was mid. you were it pretty was mid. <laughs> you were fired up last week about not having the extra incubator from the expedition access. Yeah, I would have liked it. I would have liked it. Following and let me tell you followed up by an event where you have to hatch. (laughs) Yeah. We're not what you wanted. (laughs) I didn't see a single char cadet. Yeah. Either have I. Either have I. And I've hatched a mixed bag of everything. Yeah, and I'll say I have Well, uh, while while you look at that, up on the screen for the video viewers, I have the, the blog for the Horizon event, and there's one thing you notice. I have three as... 5Ks still with like. Okay, all right, so you got a chance. The the, the easier chance. Remember, 10Ks, it's permanent, so we'll go from there. Oh but, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> but on the screen Might as is well the blog. Put it in 12Ks at this and point. Adam, I don't know if you picked up on this, but the blogs do not have photos of the Pokemon anymore, where it shows you like the list of Pokemon available, the Wild Encounters. It just says it in bullets and bullet points. And uh, personally, I think this is horrendous. I I think these blogs over the years have gone through so many incredible ups and downs. Remember, there was like two years where the blogs were just, man, they were so brutally terrible. And then all of a sudden, the blogs turned into like this beautifully narrative, written, amazing thing. And it was great. And then they changed to this more visual infographic style presentation and it was awesome but now all of a sudden there's no pictures and it's like i don't want a list this is not intriguing to me at all to like look at a list of field research task encounters with an asterisk find the the footnote on the asterisk just for it to say if you're lucky you may encounter a shiny one give me the picture of rockruff with the shiny symbol you know what i mean like yeah it's like i do not like this presentation time constraint but you, know? you would think, but, right? You would think, but yeah. we're going to revisit this when we talk about the weather event. But they could also go back and take care of it. Because I do know that the other ones, I've seen them in there. I looked. They don't have it either, man. We're going to get there. Well, we're I looked gonna... at GoFest. Well, GoFest is different. GoFest has its own landing page. That's not even. That's not just a blog oh, post. Well, I guess they got to make that more pretty than the rest of the site. But what did you think of this pool of Pokemon available. I I kind of focused on the Rock Rough, you know, trying to just get as many of the Dust form as I can, so that was nice. We had a nice little tight network of 
people rate remote rating the dust form uh rock rough so that was cool um i don't know like i said it was mid and what about captain pikachu any shinies? I didn't get the shiny, wow. but I got two Alolan Grimers. I got a Caterpie, a Pidgey, a Bronzor, and I don't know if it was before, like, it was right after the event, but I did catch a shiny male knitter in. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think, I have a question from Fisher J in the chat, says, why do I feel like Captain, uh, like the Captain Pikachu would uh, would smoke Ash's Pikachu? Would, I, dude, in, if you're watching well, Horizon, the Raging Volt Tacklers, so dude, the Raging Volt Tacklers, name, dude. If you're watching the Horizons, the anime, uh, this Pikachu is like kind of gruff. It's it's really cool vibe. Definitely different than Ash's Pikachu. Uh, it's kind of weird at first to see Pikachu on screen and hear Pikachu say Pikachu in the Pikachu voice, and knowing like that's not Ash's Pikachu. So. Very interesting, like, take. I love that it's tied in with the game, but... There'll be some plot twist, probably, at, like, Horizon Season 2 or whatever the finale of Horizons is, and it's like, Ash gave his Pikachu away or something. Oh, no. (laughs) Scipio in the chat says, hopefully the new blog isn't a standard uh, bearer and someone just phoned it in this time. Uh, Look, you would think, but the, the... the next two blogs are also the same thing, and we'll talk about that. But uh, the the vibe that I saw online here was, uh, you know, people don't like egg based events; they just don't. Um, no, you know, it just it feels so bad. Yeah, and especially when you hatch a bunch of eggs, and I'm walking, and I'm hatching several a day, and I don't and I don't get it. The the one Pokemon that's in an egg <laughs> that everybody's like, ah. And where are you at with Team Go Rocket Balloons? Do you care? <laughs> I I did do a bunch of them at first, and then I was like, I just don't care. But did like, you did you get the room? I was so mad. I was no, not yet. Do you got to do more balloons? And let me tell you, <laughs> I saw, I did one, and I specifically was like, let me pull over. There's a Joltik. It said it was electric, and I was like, let me look at it. Let's see what it is. And it was Joltik, and I was so excited. I was so hyped. I was like, please let this be a Joltik. That's shadow. Hopefully it's good for either PvP or I get the shiny. Nope. Alolan freaking Geodude. <laughs> like, how can you mess that up? I was it's so electric. upset. Boogie, oogie, oogie. <laughs> boogie, 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 boogie. Oh, you that's horrible. You cannot catch this. It's electric. But it's just a Geodude. Yeah, no, it's... I, the, the vibe online really was that the spawn pool on the map was lackluster. Yep, um, and the the and then Im- you did the and then you did the screenshots or the pictures, and it's like they're promoting Cap the Pikachu, and I get five Sprigatitos or the Fue Coco like, like what that yeah. But there's also a chance at Charizard, Charizard or yeah. Pikachu, and you don't get either. That was frustrating. Yeah. Now they gave you a, a bunch of chances. I I do like the the look of the uh, the framing on that the the ghost snapshot surprise. That looked really cool. But I just don't think that Charcadet had enough penetration. Yeah. Giggity. To to make this imp, this event about Charcadet, it didn't. Yeah, uh, and it's like that's the main protagonist, right? And and getting yourself into a, a cerulege or whatever is is so far off for people because they're still trying to get their first charcadet. The event is done, so unless you were grinding, you may not even see these dex entries yet. So we'll have to see how they uh, how they roll out, you know, in the future. If this is just gonna be always pinned to ten ks and never in the wild, uh, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. It'll be like Jangmo O or whatever. I'm a Peruvian cat says uh, that Joltik will work in uh, Electric Cup. Or the yeah, Geodude. The Geodude could work in the Electric Cup, too. <laughs> the Electric, I, I could care less about the Geodude. Fisher J, Charcadet will be a community day in time. Yeah, everything will come around as a community day, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I solemnly think that that's why Jangmo O is just a normal dragon without it being shiny for GoFest. Yeah. And then we'll get shiny Jangmo later uh, later on. 
How about Tapu Coco Mega Septile uh, with Nature's Madness? Ooh, the I think I did one Tapu Coco. <laughs> I did one Shout today. Out to Agent X for helping me because it was a duo. <laughs> Should, no, you duoed it? Oh, good for you. Yeah. No, that that's that's good. I, no, I uh, I had an interesting experience. So I I moved a couch into my new place today, right? And Scipio, who's in the chat right now, helped me out. So shout out to Scipio. Uh, but afterwards, we went to Dunkin' Donuts to just chill and, and you know, catch up. And uh, there was a Tapu Coco there. I'm like, yo, you want to duo this? And he's like, yeah, let's do it. We partied up. We And we go to join the raid. And there's three people in the raid. And it's just like, where are these people? Because we're sitting in the Dunkin' Donuts. They could have been anywhere in the parking lot, whatever. And uh, it ended up nine people coming to the raid after invites and all that. So we smoked the thing. And then uh, about two minutes later, like, a dude almost purposely on the other side of Dunkin' Donuts had his audio on. And it was like the intro, like when you turn on the game, you boot up the game and the music is super loud. <laughs> you know, <laughs> when you forget to yeah. like turn the music yep. off. And I was like, he was like trying to get our attention. It was funny. Um, but uh, I, I've done a couple tapus. I already had the shiny. So I, I need shiny Lele. But, you know, it's good having these back as shiny, like I said last week. But we've had them before. Uh, Reg Ice up next, not very exciting for a lot of people. Yeah, that's a boring one. Yeah, it's uh, you know, it is what it is. But let, let's let's jump over to the future. We have Weather Week coming up, and uh, for the video viewers and anyone at home, I'll link to this in the description so you can take a look at it. You'll notice that just like the Horizons event, there's no artwork in the blog. And it just sucks the life out of the blog that you have bullet oh, no. points. Did you see like the the cover photo? That's beautiful. The cover photo is great. The cover photos is amazing. But you then have the wild encounter list of all the like different weather. Th it's like one bullet per heading. It's like this looks. This is just an eyesore. Like look at what that's what is on the screen right now. It's just literally a bullet yeah, list going down. It's, it's bad. bad. It's ugly. Um, Niantic, we got you got to fix this. This is, you know, again, this isn't the develop the game developers side. So it's like we we're not going to be pulling resources from the game developers to clean up the to put <laughs> pictures in the blog. But you got to put pictures in the blog. It just doesn't. I don't know, man. Doesn't tickle my jellies in any way, shape, or form. And essentially, this whole this whole time, the only thing you want to go after is the Amora. or the heal up tile. If you don't have those, I mean, Paris is also good. That's a if, well, especially if it's weather boosted, the, that's like extra stardust on top of extra stardust. So this is going to be Thursday the 14th to the Monday the 18th. So by the time you hear this uh, out on VOD or whatever, this will be in in play. Now, the good thing about this event is pretty much wherever you are in the event, you're going to have shiny checks. Everything is previous, previously available uh, shinies. So there's plenty of shinies to go after. Like you said, Amora is a holdout for a ton of people. Not always available. Um, Helio Uptile, you know, coming off of the charged up research day and stuff, I'll definitely be going for the Amora. Uh, Lick a tongue for the PV peepers too as well. Uh, the raids, again, looking at the raid list and it's just bullet points, it's, it's, it's not impressive. Uh, Mega Tyranitar finally back. Adam, will you please get your weight up with the Mega Tyranitar okay, so you I'll can? Try. You okay. just got to get enough Mega Energy to do one. Just do one. Jeez, Louise. Uh, field research task encounters. This is what you're talking about last week. Uh, it's the cast form show, right? This is the key mm -hmm. art. So, uh, what'll be cool here is it says some trainers might even encounter the following cast form snowy. So. I don't believe in any way that the field research tasks are going to be tied to the actual weather. So right, you right. could be in an area that will never naturally get fog or snow, and you could be able to farm these researches to get chances at snowy cast form, which is pretty cool because some people will just never get snow or never get fog. So they'll never see this spawn in the wild. So now's your chance to kind of game the system on that. Uh, collection challenges note the pluralization of challenges so this could be uh evolution challenges catch challenges photo challenges whatever it may be that you have to do and you're getting we're getting stardust and incense yeah I that's mean, pretty I, cool i appreciate that but can i get also get an incubator dude you just want these incubators so bad and then we have showcases as well so weather week coming up 
uh, it's a cool precursor to uh, Kyogre coming over the weekend, you know, the following weekend. So that that's kind of cool how the weather kind of leads into that. These are good shinies. They all look really good. That They're all really good looking. They're all really good looking. I can't tell what they look like because I don't have pictures. Yeah, <laughs> right. Well, they wouldn't show you the shiny, but we would. No, I know. We wouldn't still. be able to see one with the shiny symbol next to it. But yeah, pretty much, this is like a shiny hunter's kind of playground here because, uh, you know, it's like poor Poliwhirl in One Star Raids. You know, Middle Evolution, you can't be shiny. It's like that's the only one on the list that can't be shiny in this whole event. <laughs> so, uh, totally beat. But let us know what you feel about Weather Week. Do you think that, uh, you know, uh, do the cast forms matter? Is this a cast form driven event or kind of will you just be, I don't know, in it for the, the double dust? Because that's really what what this all comes down to. In it for the to. double dust. Yeah, in it for the for double sure. dust. So everything you catch, you know, especially like, um, you know, if you have time to grind and you have some uh, some star pieces, you know, this is a, another really good one for um, Roar of Time, right? So if you have Dialga's Roar of Time, you have a star piece, you can go out and play for an hour or two, drop one star piece, hit up Roar of Time, stretch that out for whatever your play session is, and uh, you're good to go. And you're good to go. Let's bump over to Verdant Wonders, and on the key art we see Zarud, Zarud. making its oh, return. Oh, wait, are those eggs? No, they're, they're where? Whim, Who, they're, what? No, but in with the uh, Zarud, you see you see Cottony and Whimsicott uh, with a little flower crown. You see some Flabebes down there, so that's pretty cool. This is the 21st through the 25th, so we'll actually have another episode um, before this is live. So we don't have to go into too much detail, but what we'll talk about here is the 799 Rogue of the Jungle uh, ticket. So this is the ticket for a special research that leads to an encounter with Zarud. You're paying Ooh. for, you're pretty much paying for this side special research that's completely independent of the actual Verdant Wonders event. So just know that out of the gate. This isn't even really a ticket that would enhance your Verdant Wonders experience for the event itself. This is just a complete standalone just special buying special Zarud. research, two premium battle passes, six pineapps, five rare candies, an incense, uh, various dark and grass type Pokemon encounters, and then of course Zarud. And then from incense, you have uh, Flabebe in the respective regions. We're going to talk about that. Uh, if you're lucky, you might encounter white and orange Flabebe no matter where you are. The monkeys, Pan Poor, Pan Sage, Pan Seer, for everyone breaking the region lock. They've done this before. Ooh, that'll be good. They've done this before, but this is for newer trainers. It's a fantastic way to get some shiny regionals. Cutie Fly is also featured. Definitely a holdout for people. And we have Cottony wearing a flower crown. Zerua also called out uh, from Incense. So that'll be a good opportunity to grind that shiny. Now, I'm going to have it pulled up on the screen. The section of the blog where it says, you know, that each of the Flabebes are appearing in the different regions. So this is an updated blog because we're on our Zoom call with the community, the patron community last night, and we're talking about the event. And I'm like, yo, everybody can get all the Flabebes. They're breaking region locks so long as you buy the ticket. And JC Picks is like, yo, wait a second. You're telling me that this is on there or did they screw it up? And I'm like, nah, dude, I was just looking at it at work. And I was putting together the show notes. I was like, I, I just looking at it. And it's there. And, and they didn't mention it. But when you scroll down and you talk about the wild encounters, that's where they call out that they're from the different regions. And he's like, dude, I bet you they update this. And sure as shit, on the Zoom call, I pull up the blog. They updated it. So Flabebe wow. will not be spawning everywhere for everyone it's just the normal regional breakout breakdown so uh go figure go figure uh but cottony wearing the flower crown and that you could evolve up to whimsicott those are the uh the new pokemon of the event but we have some interesting ones in here i know my girlfriend sarah will be excited because tangela is in this event that's her favorite pokemon and she's very excited for it to Isn't get a, a shiny oddish dude 
there's look, we've talked about there's an ass for every seat. There's a Pokemon is someone's favorite somewhere. <laughs> Your favorite is Tangela. Yeah, that's just how it, how it shook out. Uh, but the monkeys here as well for uh, whether you have the ticket or not. And uh, plenty of research. The Cottony with the Crown is in research. Collection challenges. Uh, complete the collection challenge to receive Stardust XP and an encounter with Cottony and showcases. So, all right. We'll talk about this next week because we have some time before the event. But uh, I, I'm so distracted by the blogs. I'm so distracted by the blogs. Why, be distracted. why is this inf- affecting me so much? It shouldn't. I don't know. It's harder to look at. It's definitely harder to look at. It's like I, Like I was bored looking at it. Like Agreed. I, I looked Agreed. at it. I saw it. I read what it was, but like, ugh. Yeah. Well, we'll what we'll do is we'll take a break. When we come back, we'll talk about GoFest. The GoFest Go blogs. GoFest? Beautiful. The GoFest blogs are beautiful. Uh, we'll talk about that. Uh, we'll talk about this Wayfair situation, which was really interesting, and then we'll get into this email. Uh, but yeah, you ready to take okay. a break? Sounds good. All right, yeah, we'll be back. Take a break. Right after this. Video oh. viewers, we're still here. What's up, chat? Adam, you need a you need a caffeine. You need a jolt. I do, and I had caffeine. I have a zero sugar A and W root beer. Like seven, and I shouldn't have, but like. And I also have. It's just this light. It's just it's like so much on my eyes. Like I don't know how people do this, dude. I have. A freaking Elgato key light blaring in my face. Hold on. You know what I could do? I could go like this. We got behind the scenes. Look at this key. They got this key light shining in my face. You'll see my terrible setup that I got going on here. Hey, I, got, I like that. I got no pants I like on. I can't. Whoa. I can't show too. He's got <laughs> no pants on. Who He's wears pants? No pants are for the birds. It'd be funny if birds wore pants. Quick, Ken, do the no pants dance. No pants dance. No pants. Only fans. I'm about to start hobbitfeet.com. <laughs> <laughs> Hobbit toes. What's between your toes? Nothing but Hobbit toes. Nothing but the smelliest. One does food. not simply walk to Mordor <laughs> without first acknowledging the Hobbit toes. Feel so the grass good. between those toes. Yeah, man. Shire grass. The halfling's leaf. All right. You ready? Ready to get back in? <laughs> I don't know. We take ourselves way more seriously. Oh, it, you know. Yeah. All right. You ready? I think I'm okay. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Are you ready? Dude, I as freaking born ready. And... And... It's all second gear. Oh! Okay, oh, we're back. We're back. Oh. It's like it's Fast and Furious. It's like this twelve gear gearbox. Uh, what's going on? We're back. Thank you so we're much back. for that. Uh, we yeah. had we had sips of drinks and uh, we're 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 hydrated so we don't dehydrate. And uh, yeah, That's let's true. get through a little housekeeping and we'll talk about GoFest. I just want to say this podcast is powered by Patreon, and you can check ours out over at patreoncom Professor, where you can support this show and all the shows on our network for as little as a dollar a month. And that dollar will get you access to our patron exclusive Discord, which is a fantastic place filled with fantastic people. And all patrons are eligible to participate in our monthly Pokemon Go and TCG Live prize tournaments. Registration is in the Discord. We hope to see you there. Huge thanks to our gym leaders, Beard Bo Baggins, Ben, DJ Wonderbread, GK Hall of Council, Jamal Joseph, Kimberly, and Mythical Hitch. Special thanks to our executive producer, Paul Bott, as well as the other executive producers on the network, Tish Smith and Kate the Cons. Make sure you check out PokemonProfessor.com for everywhere you can connect with us, all the shows on the network, get some merch, leave us some reviews, all that good stuff. PokemonProfessor.com Wow, wow, wow. All right, let's That's talk. a lot of info. It is. Let's talk GoFest. And uh, so Japan GoFest sold out. They've done this before where uh, they'll release like another batch. Like this is the early bird tickets, right? And then they release another batch down the road. So there might be additional tickets down the road. I think Saturday in New York, Saturday morning tickets were sold out. So it this is clearly going to be another batch spectacular event for Niantic, right? Like these, all of these events are just going to be absolutely nuts. Uh, the one in Sendai is interesting because it's pretty far from Tokyo. 
Um, you were in Barcelona last year. Now this is in Madrid. And then we have wow. New York City again. So very, very varied geographies. And along with that come the different habitats that you're going to see at the different events. We'll talk about all that good stuff. But what we're really going to focus on is New York because America. Uh, let's talk Go Fest event gameplay. New York, uh, July 5th through 7th. I want to talk about these dates specifically because of how difficult this makes travel for everyone that wants to go, especially people that have to fly far. Yeah, imagine the the available hotels currently because it is the busiest weekend. Dude, it's nuts. The prices are and they're just going to keep climbing. insane. Insane prices. Uh get in early. Do the Airbnb you literally thing. You won't be able to find a spot. Dude. Period. If you don't find something right now. So on like the if Zoom you're call, you're not booking, booking a hotel like now. <laughs> Yeah, you're not gonna yeah. find Dude, something uh, on the Zoom last night. We had a bunch of options. Every you know, our community is amazing. It it also before I even get into the event, it really was like a, a beautiful moment for me as a, a creator last night on the Zoom call because I'm witnessing like all these talking heads on our Zoom, and we had a bunch of people on last night, and everyone on the Zoom had all played Pokemon Go together in person. And literally, people are all over the, the country, you know, on this Zoom call. It was amazing. And I had this really proud moment where I was just like, everyone's talking about getting places together and doing this and making all these plans. And I'm like, dude, this is such an incredible thing. It shows the power of this community. But it breaks my heart to see exceptional challenge thrown at them simply because of the date. And yeah. It, 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 and it I hurts. feel it, I think, the most. Dude, it's it's everywhere. Well, yeah, because you work retail, man. This is a crazy weekend well, to get no, off no, of no. work. I, I, work, I, work in ice, I work with ice cream, and I am responsible for ice cream. And I have to Adam's the sure ice cream I man. Have free, I have to make sure that there is a freezer full of ice cream before I even, like, like leave. <laughs> so and it goes so fast, <laughs> and it's going to be the busiest weekend. I'm like literally scared out of my mind I'm right just, now. I'm just thinking of you in the ice cream man outfit. <laughs> like, oh, I don't have one of those. No, but like, I, do wear like a, I do wear a fancy apron. Oh, that's amazing. But no, we saw the prices of the hotels, man. It was bonkers. Bonkers. Yeah, like that's that's just insane to me. Now I, I literally don't know what to do with crazy prices with all this will go fest still be a smashing success in new york absolutely will it still sell you know tens of thousands of tickets for the experience sure. i think people will have a lot less money for uh for consumables well, at, uh 100 percent, 100 percent. like like whatever the merchandise is it better be like keychains yeah. whatever like <laughs> it better be freaking hundred dollar bills <laughs> <laughs> no, it's 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 definitely uh, a All challenge just because of the like weekend. The the value menu for stuff in the Pokemon Center. There needs to be a value menu for trainers like myself that have to go in and be like clearance. Where's the something. clearance? Where's the clearance want, rack? Just, yeah, where's the clearance rack? I just I'm looking for something with Deli Bird on it. Can something please just have Deli Bird on it? <laughs> Don't call him Mister Tingling. Um, Marshadow makes its debut at Pokemon Go uh, Fest. This is great. Not expected. I did not think you didn't expect Marshadow. No, I, that's okay. I just it, expected a, another Shaman. No, but I know, right? The number six. There's no Shaman, shame in Shaman, Shaman, right? There's no shame in having <laughs> having six Shamans. Um, no, it's. Uh, I, I didn't expect this. Uh, Marshadow is a cool Pokemon and all, but. Um, I did not de 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 Lando off in the chat says Ken did not detect the four shadow. I did not detect the four Mar shadow. Uh, I love the key art. I love the video that they put together and all that stuff. But uh, it's a mythical, so it is what it is. It follows the pattern. I just wasn't expecting it. Um, kill me for wanting like Arceus. Kill me for wanting Volcanian. Like I don't know. I just I want Volcanian. I love Volcanian. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when you played that deck, that was. That was pretty cool. Yeah, you mean when I finally pieced together that deck and then it went out of rotation went in, like, in like in like a month? It took so long to build, dude, it. <laughs> bro. TCG ain't cheap, bro. Uh, but it is. It's so cheap right now. Park experience, city experience, same kind of thing as last year. When you purchase your tickets, you kind of choose what day you want to play in the park. 
That day will be your only day to play in the park. And then the city experience you can expand upon like they did last year to, to have additional days. And we'll talk about that. So park experience, Randall's Island again. I'd imagine they're going to have a very similar setup as last year. Uh, you know, our Robert F. Kennedy Bridge to get across and all that good stuff. But we'll talk about it when they release the map. We'll dig in as we get a little bit closer. Uh, let's scroll down really quick and we'll talk about the habitats. And this is where we're going to see the differences between the New York Go Fest and the Japan Go Fest and all that stuff. Um, Fisher J in the chat says, I was predicting Arceus. Yo, everybody was, right? Like, I know a lot of people were because we just want it. Uh, I think that's going to be one of those Pokemon where it's going to be very interesting to see how they roll out all these different you know, versions and forums. We know the Kirims are in the game, right? Remember that screw up? So it's like, we yeah. know that we know they're there, but we'll, uh, we'll have to see. But speaking of New York, brilliant skies. We see Pikachu wearing a sun crown. We see Eevee wearing a sun crown. Uh, and then we have some, you know, other cool Pokemon. Arkin, Archon in the wild is cool. Rufflet is great. Uh, Jangmo, oh, again, the non-shiny in the group. Uh, there's that. Ghostly Woods, now you have Pikachu and Eevee wearing the Moon Crown. Uh, some cool Pokemon. Flabebe, this, this, they gotta add the, the Niantic if you're watching. Throw a, uh, a shiny symbol right here because now that Verdant Wonders is, uh, is released, you know what I mean? You can, you can put that. Uh, Phantump and Pancham. Pancham in the wild is gonna be huge. This is typically an egg Pokemon, so that's tons of fun. Poolside Cabana. Lapras wearing the scarf makes its return. Oh, man. Clam Pearl. Clam oh, Pearl. You, you man, go, you're going to get so many shinies, and you're going to try to evolve it into the Huntail, and it, it's going to be It's going to be all Gorbis. Uh, but <laughs> the Pow style Oricorio, Pom Pom style Oricorio here, this is huge. Uh, and the female Frillish. Rugged Quarry up next. Um, it is rugged. You know, Drillbur's uh, the one you want. Drillbur's in here. Amora's in here. Um, you know, PvP play, Raider play. There's a lot of play here because you got Beldum, you got Bastion. But and more. And more. Don't and forget. The, yeah, there's always and more. There's always and more. Yeah, and, but don't forget. Yep. And then like all habitats, they show all the unknowns and Clef key. Clef if you key. use all the letters of unknown, it spells out Adgahanti. Hmm? That's what it spells Ooh. out. So, um, good choice, Niantic, to spell that out. Um, but no, A-D-G-H-I-N-T-Y, the question mark here is really the star of the show, I think. I think that's going to be the one. Uh, we had the exclamation point last year. We have the question mark this year. I have a full... Actually, let me flex real quick. Let me flex on them real quick. Uh, oh, you know what I did? What? I won a contest. You did? our last... Yeah, and I got my my. You got PhD your PhD Pikachu. Pikachu? Yeah. What? It wasn't shiny, and That's, it wasn't very good. Adam, you did a thing. I'm so proud. Yeah, I'm super excited. No, I'm gonna pull it. up my phone real quick on screen for the video viewers. What you're seeing is a full unknown decks filled out, which is great. Are they all shiny though? Hell no. But oh, so you don't well, have it all. They're filled not out. all don't released. Lie to me. Don't lie to the people. But when it comes to unknowns, and I'm gonna show, I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah, show, you need to up. get all the shinies to say that you actually have yeah no no decks. no but no you uh, can't flex look, without when, flexing hard when it comes know? to the to You're the question mark i only have hardcore. one question mark i have one so i need more that is that is the question ken why do you only have one question mark i don't know man that's the question man i did get the shiny uh exclamation point last year though that was very exciting all right, all right, all right. As How the Pokeball turns, says unknown with a monocle when? Yeah, the whole thing is just a monocle. It's got like a little chain hanging off it. <laughs> That'd be funny. That's just Clef Key. <laughs> uh, yeah, but we get the Clef Key. This is, this, is pretty, this is pretty exciting. You know, there's always that one solid Pokemon where it breaks the... Uh, it breaks the... The format? The format and uh, the region lock, which is really cool, which is really nice. All right, let's uh, let, let's compare now. If we're not going to go through all of them, but if you look at um, at Madrid, you've got Esper in the wild. The Pan Sage is in this mix. Uh, Mun is here. Um, scrolling through them, you have Dupiter, the stupider Pokemon. Uh, Crabrawler is in here. Uh, here's the 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 red Oricorio is in this one. Orange Flabebe, Tangle is in there. Uh, Pow style is here as well. Uh, same things with the unknown and clef keys. And then over in Japan, uh, you know, you've got blue striped basculin. You got carbink, tyrant, dwebble in the mix. 
Um, Hitmon Top in the mix. Cutie Fly, another holdout. Uh, Emolga. Emolga has always been a Pokemon that I'm so annoyed when I hatch it because it couldn't be shiny. Now it can be shiny, so that's exciting. Uh, Pancham is in Japan as well. Sensu Style or Koryo, which is their natural one. Uh, Fomantis is in the mix. A nice blend of Pokemon throughout here, so it's, it's kind of cool. Um, but there's plenty to... Uh, that's I'm sure is still to come. Wave God Five said Blissey King. Yeah, yo, what's up? You know about the Blisseys. What you know about the Blisseys? Um, no, it's uh, the, what it really comes down to is um, these are separate experiences from country to country. I think it's important for them to do that and have different named habitats and things like that. Um, it just makes it a little bit more exciting to uh, to kind of. You know, when you when you have the people that travel, I'm just pulling up my blissies real quick so I can see. Ooh, I got some good gym defenders right now. Hold up. Let me see. I got hold up. I just have the one that's 100 percent. Bro, I, I got I got 40. Buds. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve blissies and gyms right now. Hold up. What do, what, what, what do I got? What do I got going here, going on here? I got 12. That's that's how I feel oh, with like my one deli bird. I'm trying to do this with one hand. Yeah, I got 12, 12 Blissey and Jims right now, baby. Let's go. Blissey squad. Listen, I got, is in I got full one effect. deli bird that's been in a gym for 72 <laughs> days, three hours, seven minutes, and six seconds. Nice, nice. And it's the one that uh, Unbreakable traded me. Very nice. Way oh, back, that's fun. Way back when. That's fun. All right, let's uh, let's talk about this this Wayfair forum post and. Uh, it's just going to be interesting to see how this shakes out. I think it, it'll it have more impact in the forums than it does actually on the map. But Niantic Aaron today posts on the forums, says uh, this is a discussion about trail markers. Now, trail markers uh, are something that whether you're a wayfinder or not, if you've gone on a hike, you've probably seen a trail marker POI, a way spot, right? Like, do you have trails by you that have trail yeah. markers? Now, are those trail markers like trail a trail b like basic ass shit like <clears throat> not an elaborate sign that says like you know a fancy pantsy some trail of, name but yeah, like some of them yeah like i have uh like one that goes around the, the whole lake it you know it has like small like numbers so these were typically home run nominations if you saw a trail marker it had it wasn't just an arrow it didn't wasn't a piece of paper or a sticker uh, even if it was simply like an arrow with trail one written on it or something like that, that was a unique distinguishing feature. So that trail marker was in fact unique from the one that's a hundred meters down the road that says trail number two. So they were typically home run nominations. And this is what Niantic Aaron puts up on the forums today in response to talking about someone getting a warning for putting trail markers in says trail markers that list the name and other information about the trail are good candidates. That makes sense. But then he says that the note and look, I love Niantic Aaron. He, he, he posts good stuff. He's in here a ton. So it's good to have a forward facing customer facing voice from Niantic. It's great. Yeah, for sure. But specifically when it comes to Wayfair and the criteria being like the, the Wayfair law, right? Where if it's in the criteria, they'll, that will typically influence voting, nominating, appealing, all that stuff. He says, the ones with just numbers or arrows are not considered good. Which kind of goes against some of the previous communications, even from Niantic, from going back years talking about trail markers. So this thread is super interesting. It says, the information provided by the submitter also plays a role. We would love to see what is interesting about the trail. Are you really going to get that from the trail marker, though? Like, I think that the interesting thing on the trail could be like an information sign or, you know, a scenic yeah. or, you know, something like that. It says, was it the first trail in the area? Does it highlight a specific wildlife local to the region? It's going to be really hard to get that information out of a trail marker. Right, right. A good example. Though. Right. Good example. All of this will help it make it much easier to rate higher. The second part is how many of these trail markers are there? Are they distinguishable and far enough apart that it doesn't make the others less unique? The next thing we consider is it permanent stickers and printouts not considered permanent. Okay. 
He says, hope this clarifies the confusion. But then it just set off a huge thing. Testone chiming in, um, saying, the one, quoting, the ones with just numbers and arrows are not considered good. He says, I, I sincerely hope the team spends more time on this as it's a stark contrast to the previous guidance on trail markers and many wayfarers, uh, ambassadors included, strongly disagree with this stance. So we'll link to it in the description. It's good to know what's going on with Wayfair because this influences our map. This is how we play. So it's very important right. to know and what's important to them. Without clear, concise communication about this, we don't know. Like, I could go on a walk tomorrow and I submit one and then I get a warning. Why? That, that's but, the like, thing. It's good that yep. we're communicating this through our podcast. I know if you listen to Wayspotters, they're going to communicate this. So it's going to get out, but for us to have to be the ones to say it, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a bummer. It's a bummer, especially with the warning, but yeah, definitely follow up with, uh, the way spotters podcast. I know Jamal and Chris, we're going to be, uh, this will be talk, but topic number one on their next episode for sure, uh, because there's a lot going and on here. If it's here. not, you send them our way, but now we'll, here's the uh, thing. We'll get them. We'll get them set straight. This is definitely causes a lot of shake of moving and shaking within the forums. Remember, the forums are as niche as you could possibly get. Like, it's Twitter is niche. The, the Wayfair forums are like you know the ninth circle of nerd hell. You know what I mean? Like they're really if, if you're in the Wayfair forums, you're in the weeds with this game and being you know being a Wayfinder. So. Uh, I think there'll be more of a shakeup in here, and I recommend reading through this thread because there's a lot of in interesting takes on here from some people that probably have pull in how Wayfair uh, is kind of shaken out. It's just interesting that this will not, because this isn't part of the criteria, this is just a post. Will this have any impact on the way people submit, review? I don't know. Maybe? But... Probably not. I don't. I don't know. Listen to Waste Spotters. I'll be listening to Waste Spotters so I can hear what's really going on with the community here. But uh, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely an interesting thing because rural trainers kind of rely on trail markers a lot to have activity yeah. to play in a the park. They may not have statues or a fountain or something fancy, you know, in their park, but they might have trail markers, so that might be all they have. Um, What's so interesting about this trail marker is that a squirrel wrote into the wood. So it's really hard to see because it used its claw. It wrote what the trail name was. But it's been weathered, so I don't know what it is. But the squirrel, the squirrel etched its time into this tree. Damn, bro. That's the trail yeah. marker. Yeah. All right. Just have a compelling story about a squirrel. <laughs> The All head right. was cut off, but it still managed to write this. Dude, the the <laughs> the head of uh, the, the squirrel from Philly uh, Philly Safari Zone. If, if you know if you know lured up lore, you know about the the headless yeah, squirrel never, at our Airbnb. Never forget. But all right, final topic of the day. I want to talk about this email. Um, you know, we don't get emails too often. I do a really shitty job of reading emails, so I want to I want to turn that around. I want to make sure we start featuring more of the community yeah, on the show. Yeah, we do that. That'd be great. Thank you. This email is from Paulo Ricardo, and uh, it's a very long email, so I can't read the whole thing, but it starts off with, hello, how are you? I hope you're well. My name is Paulo, 32 years old, Brazilian, and also a spoofer. I've been marathoning your podcast while I play in one of these marathons on episode 29, bro. He's on episode 29. 29? That's old no school. Way. He's a G for no listening way. to that. Uh, he says, you got into spoofers, the spoofing topic, and at some point it was mentioned that they are the most toxic part of the community. Uh, after hearing this, I decided to get in touch to give my perspective on the matter. So it's perfect, right? Do do we agree with spoofing? Hell no. Do we think that it's a good idea? 29. Hell no. Oh, my gosh. I know. It's an old episode. It's an old episode. We, we had some shitty yeah. tech and gear back, back in episode 29. Yeah, so... Thanks. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Paul, for dealing with, dealing with the shitty microphones. But he goes on to say, uh, says, I have access to different game communities, whether in my country or abroad, both communities of spoofers and people that play the way the game is meant to be played. 
And in spoofer gaming communities, um, I just see people interacting with each other and having fun, chatting and making friends. At no point did I see any hostility towards the normies that the normies had for spoofers. There was no, like, hostility. So I thought that was an interesting point. And I can kind of agree with that. Because outside of the people that were being malicious with, like, the gym game, spoofers were kind of doing their own thing. But people that weren't spoofing, myself included, were, like, hella anti-spoofing. You know what I mean? We had some degree of hostility towards them because we were, they were ruining the, the sanctity of Pokemon Go. Yeah, just look at uh, New York. Just look at New York. And trying to get into a showcase. Um, he goes on to say, why is this attitude, the attitude of um, Spoofer, uh, silly or foolish? That's a question he's asked a lot. Because this group of people are using their time, energy, and intelligence to attack third parties who are just minding their own business. I remember that at the beginning of the game, Spoofers caused problems for other players because of gyms, but the system has changed. Furthermore, as a Spoofer... I can say there is no reason for me to take a gym that are often contested if I can very well take a gym that is not targeted. Kind of makes sense. If they're not being malicious, why would they take the gym that turns over 20 times a day anyway? Why would they just take, you know, the gym the in the middle gym of that somebody will definitely hit either by the end of the day or, or like that's, no, the like, gyms like that my, no one hits. Yeah, but what are they going to do? They're going to sit in that gym forever. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Why not? But but that's what that's what I'm saying. Like they can but they have alt accounts and they'll scrape themselves out. Oh, uh, okay, okay. You see what I'm saying? Okay. So it's a little bit more complex. He goes on, he starts like getting into the weeds a little bit with uh with, you know, kind of like going tit for tat and, you know, going back and forth, you know, talking shit, um, and all that stuff. So I'll ignore that. He says, I've seen people that criticize spoofers often use a Voldemort, if you know what Voldemort is, third uh, unauthorized third party auto catcher or an original Go Plus that's modified. Bad, bad, bad. Naughty, modified? naughty. Breaking TOS. Uh, personally, I love to be able to play more than I do. Get out more, meet more people, make friends, breathe fresh air and see more places. But the fact this game is too expensive in my country's currency. Something I may not feel because I'm not. I don't have uh, Brazilian, you know, currency rates here. <clears throat> he says, uh, imagine all other variables that exist that would make someone use spoofing. He says, in the end, Niantic obviously has every right to do so, and I see no reason to criticize them if it happens, meaning bans and things like that. Um, but I have to find one line out of here that really struck me, and again, absolutely no agreements here of anything with spoofing again we're just talking about a human um i gotta find it where was it oh my goodness it's just, it was... it's just it's just wild to me like i get it you know i i do if i could sit at my computer and just like play a game but like for it to be pokemon go doesn't make sense to me what do like, you mean? I don't, like, I, I, like, I wouldn't find this game exciting sitting at my computer and, like, playing it from my computer. No, nah, yeah. It doesn't, doesn't it do doesn't, it for like, you. Yeah, it just doesn't, like, I, I don't know. It's just something about that just doesn't sound fun. So here, I, I found the part of the email, and again, this is a long-ass email, so I, I kind of had to dig through. But he's talking about how people will be anti-spoofing, but then break the TOS in other ways, multi-accounting or authorized devices, whatever. Which is true. I see a lot. A lot of hypocrisy there. But what was interesting that he said um, was, I'd rather be a conscious spoofer than an unconscious player. Meaning he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing wrong. But you have the unconscious player who might be kind of like virtue signaling a bit to, to do the right thing when, you know, they're doing the wrong thing. <laughs> they got, they got three accounts or something like that, you know? Yeah. So in the end, I appreciated this email because it was a different perspective. Um, I know, especially for people that don't listen to podcasts a lot, 
sometimes they'll have a challenge with understanding how a host can talk about a topic or have a guest on even that they don't agree with because they think, oh, if, well, if you're talking about it, you must be, you must like it. You're promoting it. Or if you have this guest on, you might be trying, you must be trying to bolster them. That's not really the case. I think it's important to talk about yeah, this just stuff. Like seeking to understand. Yeah. Not that, not that you think it's right, but you know, I mean, we, we've had multiple interactions with people that are spoofers. Ha- absolutely. You know? Of course, of course. And, and, we're eight eight years into the game now. You know, we're working on eight years here. So it's like And it's and it's one of those if Niantic hasn't done anything to like I mean, they they've done stuff, but to what measure? Like I don't know. Do they know? Do they have access to all those people that Yeah, are... I mean d- dude. I and think in the past, are, I think why in the, aren't they doing anything? In the past year, Niantic's anti cheat has stepped up big time, which is awesome. Yes. You know, they, they, they started doing the automated stuff, and like there's definitely been ban waves, you know, some false flags. Shout out to those who got screwed over. But um, th- there's been a lot of people removed from the game that shouldn't be playing or, or accounts that were, you know, were doing shitty stuff that are, that are out, which is a good thing. Again, we don't agree with any of this. But it's just interesting to hear the the perspective of look, I spoof, I'm proud of it, and don't sound clip to shit. Uh, uh, I I prove I spoof, I'm proud of it, and I'm not being hostile to you. So you know you don't need to give the hostility to me. I'm just trying to live my best life. That's kind of been what we've heard over the years, and it's been hard for me to kind of digest. But here we are, eight yeah. years in, and I'm like, there's dance hasn't changed you know they're just they just want to do what they're going to do and uh it's a very interesting topic i'd love to hear what everyone thinks about it uh how this impacts them at the local level because that's where it sucks right when yeah for whatever reason the spoofers target my town so my where i used to live where i my, my when i owned a house it was in howell new jersey and every so often i'll go back to their area my son has friends there whatever so one day i bring my son to to his friends in Howell. And I'm like, I had three hours to burn. I'm like, yo, I'm just going to uh, Fisher J in the chat says Ken spoofs confirmed. Um, I So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go take all my old gyms in my town because I hadn't played in the town in a while. So I start systematically taking apart the entire town, um, just taking gyms for valor. And then I start to find out that the gyms, someone's tailing me from instinct. Where I would take a gym and move on to drive. I mean, I'm driving gym to gym. Drive to the next gym. And then by the time I complete the next gym, my previous gym is already wiped out. And I'm like, yo, someone's tailing me. So I started doubling back and going back to the gyms and retaking them. Thinking maybe I can get into like a berry war with someone. I like the gym game. And that just never happened. It just, they waited for me to leave and attack another gym and they would take the previous gym. And this happened for three hours. And by the end, if I had hair on my head, I would have ripped it out. That's how frustrating it was dealing with this. And I'm like, why are there spoofers in this town? This is not New York City. This is Howell, New Jersey. There's one highway that runs through it. There's fucking horses and farmland yeah. and shit. It's like, why are there spoofers <laughs> here? Why? It made absolutely zero sense to me. Specifically and, for you, to go after you. But that's where, yeah, maybe. But that's where targeted. the hostility comes in. That's why this. That's why people have hostility. Because they would take and fuck with the gym system and just make it not fun. And now we're seeing them completely dominate the Metro showcases like we saw in New York second to showcase drops. There's 200 people in it. You can't even get in. So, uh, Paulo, thank you for writing in. I don't agree with what you're doing. You should probably not do that, but, uh, thank you for writing in. I know you have, uh, 271 more episodes to get to before you hear this, but (laughs) when you get here, Thanks, bro. Appreciate your writing in. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. What, Regardless of what your yeah. position is, regardless of what uh, is actually... Uh, regardless of if you want Deli Bird back in the game or not. Shadow Deli Bird, please. No, but let us let us know some of the things that you're dealing with in your area, how, about your personal play style. I think that's important, is to find these uh, patterns of behavior, right? 
Um, certain ways that, that rural trainers play is so starkly different from the Metro trainer and things like that. So, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Info at, uh, po- well, let me give you lured up one. Lured up at PokemonProfessor.com. Shoot me a message there. Uh, he wrote into info at PokemonProfessor. It came through the website. Uh, but uh, let us know. Let us know if uh, you're dealing with any of this stuff and, and how you feel about um, spoofing in general. Um, we're very confident that the majority of our listener base is very uh, pro TOS. Uh Oh, Tony Anderchan, thank you so much for following. Appreciate you. Um, oh, yeah, if you're if anyone's in the stream right now or in the chat or on Twitch or anything like that, give us a follow. We'd appreciate it. But uh, Yeah, for sure. But, Adam, I think that's it, man. We we covered a lot. Um, got some GoFest yeah, news in there. We talked about Deli Bird. We, talk, we did, we did, get, did, uh, got, did get a Deli Bird mention. Yeah. We did get a Deli Bird mention. Deli, hey, everybody in I'm the chat. I'm just waiting for Iron Bundle. Everybody on Twitch, uh, let's see let's see the Deli Birds. Uh, Deli Bird's in the chat. Deli Bird's in the chat. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Deli Bird's in the chat, everybody. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much, everyone, for checking us out. We really appreciate it. If you came here on YouTube or Twitter, thank you so much for checking out the show. We appreciate it. We will continue. Look at all the deli birds. We will continue Woo! to uh, to stream over on, twi- on Twitter and YouTube. So this seems like it's uh, working out pretty well. So uh, thank you so much for that. Adam, any final words? Deli bird use present. It was super effective. Thank you so much. Keep training, trainers. We'll see you next week. Later. Bye. Thanks, chat.